Hello there, this is Business Incorporated on Channels Television. I am BC Adibayo. Coming up on today's show, South Africa's former finance minister, Pravin Gordon, criticizes KPMG for withdrawing a tax report used against him in a police probe. And the Nigeria incentive-based risk sharing system for agricultural lending enters a 50 billion naira agriculture financing partnership with Stambik IBTC. Plus, Egyptian government looks to issue 1.5 billion euro denominated bonds within the next week. But let's begin from the stock markets in Africa, where Nigeria's all share index is trending lower at entry day with a 0.14% decline. The South African burst is 0.9% up at entry day. The Egyptian index is also pointing southwards at entry day, while the Kenyan burst saw a marginal 0.01% rise on Friday. And in the Middle East, the Abu Dhabi index is up 0.14% at intraday, while the Dubai index is up 0.79% as Emma Proctor's rose 1.5% and Dubai Islamic added 0.7%. Qatar's stock index is down again as shares in Qatar insurance tumbled after it announced the closure of its Abu Dhabi branch because of the region's diplomatic crisis. The stock index had fallen for the previous 10 straight sessions. The Saudi index barely moved in the first 40 minutes of trade, with some of the petrochemical and banking shares that had risen on Sunday reversing slightly on profit-taking. But at intraday, the index is 0.13% up. And European stocks are pushing higher today, with the week getting underway with tensions surrounding North Korea cooling. Investors also have their eyes on the EU inflation data coming out today. Well, let's bring in DWTV Channels TV financial correspondent Daniel Coop for more on today's markets. It's good to see you again, Daniel. Hi there, BZ. How are you doing today? Very well, thank you. So the EU inflation data is out today. Tell us, what's the latest? Yeah, and we, have, we got the newest inflation data by the European Statistic Office today and we are seeing again what we have been seeing already throughout the last weeks and month that inflation has been going up again. Actually, this time by 1.5%. This is most likely because um, of higher energy costs and uh, when you talk about interest rates here in the Eurozone, it's going to be another indication that's not going to make Mario Draghi the head of the European Central Bank happy because uh, he has been saying that this level of interest rate is not good for the region here in Europe. So we're going to have this discussion again about higher interest rates for the Eurozone. Uh, all the investors will be uh, taking a very close look already on Wednesday uh, because on Wednesday there's going to be a press conference held by the Fed in the United States. Ms. Yellen is going to speak and she is most likely going to announce higher interest rates again for the United States because of a very uh, booming economy there and uh, that's pretty much what investors here at the stock market have been asking Mario Draghi during the last weeks and month as well for higher interest rate but so far he has been sticking at this zero percent interest rate policy throughout the last time. Royal Mail in the UK is no longer listed in the FTSE 100 in London. Why is that the case? I mean, what does this mean for the company? Well, I mean, this is uh, quite a big shock, of course, uh, for investors. Not really surprising, though, I have to admit, because uh, the shares of the Royal Mail have been performing uh, very poorly uh, in this year already in the FTSE 100. But, you know, just imagine, it's one of uh, the biggest companies, of course, in the UK. And uh, the problems uh, that the Royal Mail has been facing uh, is also uh, troubling other uh, mail carriers around Europe and also around the world because in this time where everybody has been sending uh, emails and text messages, of course, regular mail is not any more as profitable. That's uh, why they're saying that it doesn't make any sense at the moment for now, at least to be traded in the FTSE 100. The picture here in Germany is a little bit different. When you talk, for example, about Deutsche Post, Deutsche Post is also holding DHL, which is uh, the biggest uh, express uh, 
uh, carrier around the world. So they are also having this international business. But Royal Mail has been mostly focusing uh, just on the UK market, and that's uh, why they are not as competitive as other mail carriers in Europe. Now, just before I let you go, Daniel, let's talk about the Simmons Russia trial over gas turbines. How important is Russia's business for Simmons? I mean, this story, you know, is kind of like a Hollywood movie, uh, BZ. I mean, uh, Siemens was selling those turbines to Russia. They were thinking that those turbines would be used in the southern part of the country. Then they found out by incident basically that those turbines were transferred from the south to the Crimean um, island uh, you know that the European Union has been uh, you know sanctioned so uh, Siemens would not even be allowed to do this uh, kind of uh, you know trade and business Siemens has been very upset about, upset about this they are even going right now through a trial with a Russian uh, state um, but of course, uh, the Russian market is very important to Siemens. They cannot uh, just say from one day to the other, you know, we're not going to do any more business with Russia. It's a very important market, mostly because of three issues. Trains, for example. Uh, Siemens is uh, building uh, most of the trains uh, for Russia. Uh, very similar here, for example, the Intercity Express is very uh, popular in Germany, but also in Russia. Uh, then also about nuclear plants and also about those gas turbines. For the moment, uh, Siemens has announced that they're not going to do any more business with companies uh, owned by the Russian uh, state. But in general, the market is very important to Siemens, so they cannot, you know, just ignore the market. Many thanks, Daniel, for those updates, and we'll see you again tomorrow. And U.S. stocks are shaping up to resume a record run on today, with stock futures pointing higher as investor appetite for riskier assets continue to improve and concerns over North Korea ease. The Dow Jones Industrial Average futures rose 0.27% to 22,279, while the S&P 500 futures gained 0.2% to 2,502. NASDAQ 100 futures added 0.19% to 6,006.25. And stock markets across Asia rallied on Monday following fresh record closes on Wall Street with South Korea's benchmark index leading gains. South Korea's KOSPI ended up 1.4%, logging its biggest gain since May, propelled by a 4.1% jump in index heavyweight Samsung Electronics. In Australia, the S&P ASX 200 ended 0.5% higher, supported by strong gains in bank shares. Meanwhile, Hong Kong's Hang Seng Index rose 1.3 percent. China's benchmark indexes also advanced, with the Shanghai Composite Index's 0.3 percent gain, lifted by gains in alcohol and brokerage shares.